because I think that sometimes we forget that when we're talking about food, especially food in expensive restaurants, we're not just talking about nourishment, the things we eat, what we heard at the beginning, the emotional pieces. People go to restaurants not just to have dinner or they would eat at home. The people go to restaurants you know, for other reasons. And to let go of some of the power of the guest in a restaurant to say, just cook for me whatever it is that you can find that you think Mr. Chef is great. I've heard the, the dining audience in Montreal is the best in North America, I was told, because um, the chefs love, you love what the chefs do for you. It's not true in New York, where people like to show you who they are by what they order and what they eat. <laughs> it's changing. So I wonder if you could, John, just ask, talk a little bit about this relationship between the chef and the guest and that, that, that sort of change in power that's required um, for you to cook for them rather than what they want to get from you. The way we, we developed it was, first of all, we were going to be as open and honest as possible. We're not hiding anything. We, we go, you go to the website or you go to the Facebook page or you hear someone talk about it and we present it and we give you, this is what we're serving today. This is what we'd like to feed you with. And this is what it's gonna cost so that we can pay for the food and pay for the employees. That's ridiculous, that'll never work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. No one. And, magic, it has and, to be magic. And, 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 that, and that's it. And, that, that's, what, and that's, that's, all, that's, that's all we do because we tried to create around the restaurant a feeling of being uh, at home almost. Like there's, the, you walk into the restaurant, there's hardly any walls. Um, it's open, it's small, it's cozy. Um, I've had people say it feels like I'm at your dinner table, which for me is probably the best compliment you can get. And, and that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to make it so that they're so comfortable they don't need to choose. Mm. And the other, the other thing we go is there are more restaurants per person in Montreal than anywhere else in North America, which means in Montreal you already have to make a whole lot of choices just to get where we are, so we're, we're kind of saying, if you're tired of making choices, you can come and sit down and we'll take care of you. We're really good at it. It's Excellent. what we do for a living. I love it. Antonio, how do you go from serving old fermented vegetables in, to, uh, I'm, you, from the war, getting us through the war. I don't use all the f only no. fermented food, you know? I know, <laughs> like, they, I know, but come is, on, it's kimchi's what? moment right yes, now. Yes, in America, yes, you I, cannot I, eat out in New York City but, and not get kimchi somewhere. <laughs> right. uh, it, it, well, well, it's, it, it, I, you know, the, the restaurant that I have, Park, is, is a Japanese restaurant. It's a Japanese influence. The reason why I chose Japanese as my, my, my first choice when it comes to cooking. And why do I respect Japanese cuisine so much? Because you get to understand the, the refinement and the real ingredient above anything else. You're not adding other things. What I remember from, from what my mom used to do, it's she used to have a garden and, you know, I, like all mothers back in the days, they used to have a garden. But to keep all the vegetables is not only pickling and fermenting, it's dehydrating all the vegetables mm -hmm. to make sure that you can keep and preserve for all year long, for mm -hmm. one year. So this is one of the cuisine that they used to do. And Japanese cuisine is very next to each other. Sure, of course. When it comes to that, you know? Fish, <laughs> fish drying on the sun, vegetable drying on the sun. And it's not like, you know, people say, people always, we, we presume and we say, fresh fish, fresh vegetable yeah. is the best. I totally disagree with that. There's, there's, I, I do agree. I do agree that fresh fish and fresh seafood and fresh vegetables are amazing. But have you ever thought about dehydrating, putting it on the sun, those vegetables? You'll completely change your mind. You'll completely change your aspect of cooking because it has a whole different texture, has a whole different sweetness, and is a whole different family now. Well, and uh, uh, just to move it to you, Jeremy, they've been yeah. drying cod on the, in the sun for centuries to feed yeah. the world, where you're from. But tell me, for you, what, how, how do you create a sense of a place in a, in, it, uh, that is reflected in the cuisine that actually means something, that, that isn't false or somehow forced, I would say? To find the taste of a place, to make the taste of a place, another important moment we're in right now in gastronomy, not, not so easy, uh, or is it? Definitely not. <laughs> um, well, you're making a menu. G give us a dish. What, what, is, what says who you are and where you're from? Yeah, I mean, for us at Raymond's, we, uh, 
our big focus is on creating a sense of place, you know? And when people walk through the door or they come to Newfoundland, I really want to make sure they understand where they are and uh, they're not in Nova Scotia or Ontario. We've been open for almost six years now. And uh, I think just sticking to our roots and really celebrating the products around us, you know, and, and everything on our menu, our tasting menu changes every day, but everything is from our backyard, you know, to do is what it, I do. Is it true that uh, there are fill full of morel? Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, no, I approve. Uh, chanterelles. 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 Yeah. Chanterelles. Yeah, I, I've been there to cook. And I, 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 I've been there next to, next to Chef Jeremy twice, and, and I've seen Newfoundland in a whole different way. It's, I, think, I think Newfoundland is the best city where you can open a sushi restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, oh, yeah, I, 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 I've been telling him I think we should open one together. <laughs> There's no way in anywhere in Canada where it's better than Newfoundland. I, anything that you get is off the sea. Anything you get, it's of the divers. It's just unbelievable. And yet I think sometimes we forget that what we do, what we consume, uh, how we do it, how we consume it, tells people who we are. It's a projection of ourselves. We are in a moment where everyone photographs, myself included, everything we eat in every restaurant and everything and broadcasts it to the world. And yet we don't see those other parts. We don't see the things left on the floor or the plates scraped in the, the bin uh, because that's not who we want to be. Uh, so let's move this conversation into those elements, that, that ethical part of aesthetical eating. And tell me why it's important to, to, to save food, Jean-Francois, to why, why, how that fits into this, this whole theme, how, why that's not a separate thing you do, but part of, of this whole world we're talking about. Growing up with all these chefs and seeing the, the work they do and the, the work of the people who produce the, the vegetables and the the meat that, we, that they use. So food waste is not just the work of the chefs, it's the work of the, the, the farmers and the people who produce that in the first place. Uh, it's the energy that is lost. It's, it's everything that is lost when you, you lose that. And, and for me, food should be eaten. Uh, it shouldn't be, become waste. Even for me, compost is a solution, but it's not, it's not what you want to the final, aim, aim, the last for, aim for. Right. I mean, it's an easy solution for people who don't want to do, uh, to do anything about it. There's so many people who don't eat uh, that it doesn't make sense that we don't provide that food to them. I've started doing it as a sideline, um, a social sideline, a volunteer sideline. And it has become my work day to day. When I come in, the chef opens the door, I have 15 minutes to sell what I have to sell. And if it's about food waste, I need to have a solution that's turnkey, that's easy, and that you can implement, introduce as a procedure, and then the chef, they all get it. They want something simple, and it is so simple to implement. And that's why now we, we, we recover 200 tons of food on an annual basis. Uh, it, it just in Quebec, and we feed half a million people with that. In Quebec, if we would maximize all the hotels, the caterers, and the restaurants, we would feed almost three million people on an annual basis. So, why, why not do it? For the respect of the chef of the work they do, mm -hmm. the respect of the farmers, and the respect of the people that need to eat. I remember one night uh, between uh, Mario and uh, Anna Ross, uh, we were like eating pizza. So after uh, the service, we went to eat pizza at Gino Sorbillo in Milan. And uh, you know, he was serving so much pizza, so much pizza, so much pizza. We couldn't eat, even with Mario at the table. So imagine. Mario Batali. You know, Mario yeah, Batali, yes. yeah. And uh, you know, we were like, at one point, I said, guys, but what are we gonna do with this pizza? So Anna Ross was cooking the day after. I said, Anna Ross, I have an idea. That's amazing. Why don't you create a, a pizza soup? So you're gonna get the pizza all together. You're gonna mix everything. We're gonna, you, you're gonna create that. She did it. The day after she did it. And you know, it, this is a, the magic way, you know? Yes. When you have the intuition, the, the mental palate is working so fast, and you know, you're doing like a zoo pizza. You know. Well, uh, 
<laughs> to pizza. But you, you actually made the segue that I wanted to talk about, that w this, where creativity comes from in the kitchen. You've just described, it, it's very easy if you have all of the money in the world to buy the best things and make a good meal. That's, yeah, is no. that cooking no, or is that shopping? No, that's shopping. That's different. Right. Uh, that's why. You can have a great, a great uh, experience in uh, one million restaurants in the world. But, uh, and uh, what we do in Osteria Francescana every day, uh, we are creating, uh, uh, it's a cultural experience. It's a laboratory of ideas. We couldn't make uh, the refettorio in Milan if uh, we didn't have Osteria Francescana because culture brings knowledge, knowledge opens the consciousness, consciousness, the sense of responsibility. You know, we have a big painting right now uh, close to a big photograph in the entrance of, of the restaurant. One photograph is uh, at Erger Esler and the poor river that overflowed. That's Emilia Romagna. Why Emilia Romagna is like this? It's so fertile. Because the poor river was giving so much to the, to the earth. On the other side, you have Bosco Tosodi. It's a big painting with black, monochrome, earthy, with all the crabs and the scraps. It's like a monk scream of the earth. You know, the earth, they say, help! We need help. Stop using chemic, in, in, uh, and otherwise I'm gonna die. And the, the, my guys are listening to this. And the young generation are open to listen to this. And uh, that's, that's why I, I'd say, you know, we have to build the generation, the future generation, close uh, uh, that, uh, you know, the chef, they have to know more about soil, and the farmers, they have to know more about flavors. Because, uh, you know, if they grow together, it's gonna be more respect, uh, one for the other. This is the future. Mm. Okay, let's change to that. Let's talk about this, the, the things that have to come together, because um, we began with you talking about a system, really, right, where, where um, you killed a pig and it led to some certain dishes or, or scarcity leads to s certain ways of dealing. We share an economy. We're all part of a connected system. And what, if there's anything that we have to be thankful for modernity, it's separating the bits out of that system. It's bringing people from all over the world and putting them together and eating everything we want when we want it um, and maybe not having to deal with the rest of the stuff. And we are in the midst of, uh, I would say, a crisis as a result of that kind of thing. I'm going to ask you, Antonio, because I want to give you, I like giving you the hard questions because you just answer the other ones anyway. <laughs> um, I want to ask you, what, what, talk about the idea of, a, of cooking as a system or, or food as a system. I, 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 well, today I did a demo today at, uh, at Five Center and I took a, a striped bass and I used it fully from head to tail. And, and that includes the intestines and that includes the head and that also includes the bones. So I, to give you a quick example, what I did is I took the bones, I filleted them, I took the head and the bone and I boiled them to make a fumet, to make a stock out of it, a fish stock. I made a miso kimchi soup out of it, kimchi again. <laughs> and then I took the head and the bone, I put it in the, I put it in the oven uh, for about 10 minutes for, um, for about uh, 300 degrees. You can leave it at 500 for less than, less than that. And I kind of like crisped them up. And I took the bones and I mixed it together with some bread, which was very old, which was very hard. I crushed them down and I put them in a blender. So that became like a crust outside of the fish. So it was, it was like a panko that is made with the bones of the fish that I was uh, outside on the, on the meat. But I like this, huh? The important... The <laughs> no, you know, you're gonna come in uh, Rio de Janeiro in uh, August to work with Wait. us? Si. For the new soup kitchen we're gonna open? Si. Okay, I like it. Okay. He's taking so, notes. So, yeah. we're, 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 so the, the, the fish bone... But, and this is one of the things that people don't understand is that there's a reason why my mom always used to give me a whole fish with the bone in and with the intestines in. Because the bone has the most calcium. Mm -hmm. It's the best for you. So why are we throwing out the bone when you can blend them and you can mix them together with, to make the outside crust and serve it together, which is delicious because you'll just enhance the flavor of the fish. So what you're doing is you're concentrating the flavor into one little component, putting all that fish together. And th that's what I did. And I think people should work like that. You know, they should not, you know, a fruit, a vegetable, a meat or a fish has different parts of it. Think about it. If you take a step back, and I always tell this to my staff, take a step back. 
think what you can do mm -hmm. first. Don't just do it mm -hmm. for doing it. I want to change a little bit and focus on what I've heard from a lot of chefs um, and farmers and producers out there, which is the role the media plays in all of this. And, and the, the way that even though, as, as I think these folks have demonstrated today, some chefs are stopping and thinking before they do, making incredible decisions, being very soulful and thoughtful about um, the food that they serve, um, that's not always reflected in a review or in a rating or in a... Uh, there, there's not a place for it in some ways in media. So I wonder if you had some advice to people both writing about food, and I must should say I'm a journalist often, so I'm putting myself in that category, and reading about it. What should you be paying attention to about the things that you're doing? What, if you could change the emphasis a little bit that people are, are writing about the things that are going on in your restaurant? The biggest thing that needs to happen is it needs to be looked at a lot more in a context of the whole system it's in, right? Because it's, right now, a lot of media is, is, especially for restaurants, is they go into a restaurant, they sit down, they like it, they not like it, and then they go out. But, and for the average diner, that's important, but if you want to, if you want to open a conversation, if you want to put something in front that's very important to the restaurant or very important to a food system, that's where you have to, they have to be able to situate where it is. What is this, what is this place about? Why is it here? Um, and I think with restaurants like the three restaurants that these people run, they're not just there to feed people. They're there because they have something to show, they have something to demonstrate, they have something to share. And I think how each restaurant fits into that food system, who they're supporting, like the farmers, they're supporting the 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 ethic, the integrity that some of these the the and the levels that some of these people do. I think is that where you miss out is that there's not enough there's not enough research there's not enough understanding, and I think the more you talk about things like that, the more you talk about problems. I think the more the people reading reflect about why they go out to a restaurant or the food they eat. I think uh, the thing and the, and the mind of, uh, of the food uh, critic is changing. Mm -hmm. It's changing a lot. And uh, especially because uh, food is becoming so big and so wide that even uh, journalists, uh, they don't know anything about food. They start writing. But, and, and it's not a bad thing, eh? It's not a bad thing. I'm, I have a, always, a, I see always the, the glass half full. And, 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 you know, they step back, they don't know, but they start get interested in what we are doing. Mm, and the social role we have. And, uh, you know, uh, especially in, uh, in my country, uh, and I give the example of Italy, uh, you know, this kind of uh, uh, exa uh, example and this kind of uh, acting, uh, you know, uh, influence the government and uh, the politics and they pass the law, uh, even in France, so Italy and France pass a law against the waste first and most of everything, uh, you know, they put together uh, in my country uh, five different ministers uh, one is uh, culture, like the other is uh, foreign, the other is uh, tourism, uh, agriculture, and uh, education. All together, in the same frame, they start a very deep dialogue to have uh, an act approved by the government uh, to help uh, uh, all these kind of things. Because what we think, what I think, this kind of uh, restaurant, as he said, you know, are more than just a restaurant, uh, but they're like a bottega in a cimentali. Mm. They fill everything. You know, there are people that are coming from all over the world and they learn uh, and they became ambassador uh, of, of, the, of themselves. Uh, tourism, as you said in the beginning, 
gastronomic tourism is changing and is growing so much. So you see Australia, mm-hmm. Sweden, how much they invest, uh, um, mm-hmm. you know, because they understood mm-hmm. it's extremely important. Agriculture, because when the tourists, they come, they bring back food and, uh, you know, um, social. Think about the example of Peru and uh, what happened in Peru and uh, when uh, uh, the government said, uh, okay, everyone who wants to transform the field of coca in uh, coffee or, you know, uh, m- m- corn is going to be, is gonna be uh, supported. supported. And uh, one of them won the prize of best coffee in the world. So is everywhere in Peru and Peru start growing and you know all this is like is so important and you have such a big responsibility because we cannot communicate mm-hmm. to people mm-hmm. and you have to communicate what we do and especially the most uh, sensitive and the most acculturate one and uh, they have a vision you know they have to write and explain what is going to be mm-hmm. in the future mm-hmm. the projection